Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike. So today we're going to continue to discuss various anaerobic activities that are examples of using primarily one of these anaerobic energy systems. And specifically today we're discussing the lactic anaerobic energy system. So previously we talked about the alactic system. We have really short activities and those require a lot of energy, a lot of intensity for, again, a short amount of time. Now, this lactic system is helping us get closer and closer to the aerobic system, which kind of takes a while to really um, get going as we first start, but it more importantly, just doesn't create energy quite as fast. And that's where the, the intensity of the exercise comes in, and that's where this duration comes in. So if I pedal really, really hard on a bike for as long as I possibly can, let's say for two minutes, right? On my power output, I'm gonna be real fast at the beginning, and I'm gonna start to drop off at around 30 seconds, and pretty soon I'm gonna pretty much plummet, and I'm not gonna be able to create much energy at all. So right up until that, uh, that plummeting, and in the, in the, you know, right after the first drop off. So that first peak there, that's that alactic anaerobic system. That's the first, you know, 10 or 15 seconds of really usable, really friendly uh, energy inside your muscle. Then that lactic anaerobic system kicks on and it starts to buffer us towards, you know, the bottom, bottom of this peak, some sort of speed we could maintain for five, 10, 15 an hour minutes. <laughs> um, that uh, lactic system, lactic anaerobic system helps us get there, right? And it helps us keep that power output a little bit longer until it has to come back down. And so activities that do this generally last uh, greater than 10 seconds and less than two minutes. And so if we think about it from, you know, we talked about a basketball game. Um, if I am shooting uh, or I'm jumping up for a dunk or for a block, uh, that is a alactic anaerobic energy system activity. It's really short, it's really intense, but if I have to do three blocks in a row and then a fast break down the court and then another fast break down the court, then I'm starting to get really, really fatigued, really gassed out. I'm taking away that, or I'm, I'm running out of that alactic anaerobic energy capacity. And now I have to get into, I have to still maintain my intensity because these, you know, I have to keep up with everybody else. So I have to access that lactic anaerobic system. I have to be, um, I have to still perform during the game. I have to keep up with everyone, but I've had to do it for a long period of time now. And so I'm starting to get more and more fatigued. That's you know, a really realistic example of the lactic anaerobic energy system at work. The premier like running race that exemplifies it is the 400 meter and, you know, kind of maybe the 800 meter, but really the 400 meter, about 45 seconds and you just sprint the whole time. And that's why people throw up after it so much. <laughs> um, so high intensity. We've got a moderate length of activity, you know, greater than 15 seconds and less than a minute or two. What else? So hockey compared to other sports, other repeated sports is generally a little more lactic because when I shut off my muscles and I just kind of glide on the ice, I'm still on ice. There's not a lot of friction and I generally run into the next play pretty quickly there. Um, so what you notice is that shifts in hockey are really short. Whereas, you know, if you're playing soccer, you kick the ball, you, you, you run, you kind of try to steal it and then you kick it away and then you just kind of walk and you wait for it to come back to you because the field is so big, right? Um, and there's so many players involved in this game that you get more breaks. Whereas hockey, if I'm gliding, I, I, you know, collide into the next play really, really quickly. And so I don't get that break. I don't get that downtime. I don't get that recovery. And I stay in that, you know, towards the end of the alactic system range and towards the beginning of the lactic system range. And so I, I need that ability to buffer that so that I don't, you know, I don't want to get 
all the way to the end of the lactic anaerobic system range because then that's when I gas out. That's when I can't produce any more energy. Um, and in sports like this, sports like hockey and sports like any other team sport with repetitive, you know, plays over and over and over again, football, uh, you know, European football, all of these, what I want is for my aerobic system to help out as much as possible. Okay, what I want is to avoid the need to use this lactic anaerobic system. And that's surely from a performance standpoint. But if my goal is just size development and big muscles, then, you know, maybe I need to kind of steer into that. Maybe I need that burning sensation. Maybe I need that fatigue because that's the, the mechanical deformation that is causing that signal to put on more muscle. It's like, my, your body's like, hey, if you're gonna keep doing this to me, uh, I'm gonna have to do something about it. So uh, when you're all done here, I'm gonna make some more muscle and I'll show you, this will never happen again. And then you know it's thinking that. So you gradually progress the overload that you have during each of your sets. You try more weight the next time you come into the gym. And that's what keeps you tapping into that, uh, uh, that anaerobic, this lactic anaerobic system instead of something easier, less intense, more aerobic, okay? So bodybuilding, 400 meter sprint, those are prime examples of lactic anaerobic activities.